Welcome. I am Suzanne Hall Stout. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And as the minister of New Beginnings Christian Church, it is my pleasure to be the one to offer this word of welcome to you this day. As we begin our time of worship, I invite us to set the table together. There's always a place for one more at God's table when we join in fellowship, companionship, justice, and love at the table. I have set our table with some symbols and signs of things that are important to us. Community, God's love, God's presence. Perhaps your table has items that are of ritual value, of memory value to you as well. Today, as I light this candle for us, I acknowledge that we gather on land originally inhabited by the Iowa Nation and the Sauk and Meskwaki peoples. I invite you, if you choose to do so, to light your candle at home. And together, our lit candles remind us that God's Spirit connects us one to another in all ways and at all times whether we are physically at a table across from one another or whether across the miles, God connects us in love. Will you join me please in prayer? Into this place we gather seeking truth, listening beyond words for the rhythm of life. We gather seeking comfort for losses that are too heavy to bear. We gather seeking mercy, for we find within our own hearts the presence of shadow. We gather seeking justice and the strength to shoulder the burdens that are not our own. We gather to stand shoulder to shoulder with those who must no longer stand alone. Into this place we come, and we pray as those who walk a common road. Amen. We come now to our time of corporate prayer together. This week, we add our prayers. I add my prayers of thanks for you. Uh, for those of you who know, I suffered a bit of a mishap on Monday that resulted in a short hospital visit and uh, some pretty staples. I am doing better thanks to your care and your concern. I give thanks for you. I give thanks for your understanding at our um, abbreviated worship service this day. I give thanks for hospital personnel and for my husband and Emma and Wesley who were there when it happened for the care that they provide. We also share together prayers for all who are affected by the coronavirus those who care for them, whether professional or family or friend, all who are frontline workers, including our school personnel as well. 
I invite you in these time of musical meditation in just a moment to bring into your heart and into your mind the joys and the concerns that you would lift up in addition to this as well. Hold them in your heart as together we pray. Let us pray. Oh God, things are quite a mess here, what with the virus, wildfires, winds, protests, and then there are politics. If we see one more grainy black and white political ad with ominous audio, we may go mad. And then there are the personal trials and tribulations we all suffer to some degree. Illnesses, deaths, loss of jobs, loss of child care. We need some miracles here. The sooner, the better. Wouldn't it be a miracle if our elected government representatives actually talked with one another about solving problems? Wouldn't it be a miracle if everyone wore a mask to protect everybody's health. Wouldn't it be a miracle if each of us reached out to someone we know who is having a hard time? Hmm. Maybe we need to rethink miracle. Maybe the miracle is that you have provided the blueprint for action. Maybe we have the resources to make a difference. Maybe we just need the will to do the right thing. That would be a miracle. Let us continue our prayer using the templates that Jesus taught, using words that are meaningful to you. O ground of being and all of creation, which has inhabited us in all places and time, may we hold your name sacred. May life on earth be what we imagine heaven might be like. May all on earth have full measure of food, health care, shelter, and equity. Let us not carry grudges, but forgive and love one another. Help us avoid the temptation to divide rather than unite humanity. For in you is the path and power to achieve abundant life for all. Amen. Today's scripture passage is from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the 13th chapter, verses 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. Thanks be to God and God's word.
good morning. If you do not have the food and drink you need for communion, pause this service and prepare what you need, and then come back and resume when you are ready. In my previous lead-in to communion, I shared three of my special communion sets. The set I'm using today is another. I purchased it at the Church of the Multiplication of the Loaves and Fishes at Tabga on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. Whenever I see it and use it, I am reminded of the trip that took me to Tabga and the event it commemorates, the feeding of the 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000 is a story about unconditional compassion and sharing, about Jesus feeding a mass gathering. It was at once sacramental and communal, like communion. Some traditions call communion the feast of thanksgiving, anticipating the heavenly feast when all people will be welcomed and fed, when no one will hunger for the word or for acceptance or for full participation in the grace of God and the bounty of creation, regardless of creed, color, ethnicity, sexual orientation, social economic status, theology, or political party. So remembering that promise and vision, let us join in our own simple feast of thanksgiving, remembrance, and anticipation. Please pray with me. Lord of the unequivocally open welcome table, in this pandemic time, we long to gather again in person at your table, to feast spiritually on your word and grace, and once again share the physical and spiritual oneness we experience at the table. Until that time, we live in anticipation for personal interaction as much as we anticipate that great feast in your kingdom. Today and every day that we are separated, may we know, in spite of forced distance, the bond of faith and fellowship that stretches from house to house and from makeshift table to table and is expressed in our various breads and drinks. With your presence and spirit, bless each of us, our homes, our church, and the simple yet sacred food and drink we take together in separation in Jesus' name, amen. Today, as we break bread in unison, may we remember both the night Jesus broke bread with his disciples and when he fed the multitude with a few loaves and fish, and in doing so, anticipate the day when we and all persons everywhere will hunger no more for acceptance, justice, and daily food. As we drink together in separation, may we remember and receive again the life-giving, sustaining grace of God we have come to know in Jesus Christ, and rededicate ourselves to sharing the fullness of life he gave us with all of our fellow human beings. Today and all days, may you be fed from the bread of heaven and the fellowship of this moment together. Keep the faith and anticipate what is yet to come. Amen.
this week for our spiritual practice together, I invite us to continue to reflect on how our faith grounds us, how your faith grounds you in the midst of all that is. The changingness of life is ever present these days from day to day. And so in what ways does your faith, your belief, your rituals, your practice, how does that help keep you grounded and centered in this time? And now I invite you to receive these words of blessing and take them with you into whatever your week holds. May the love of God claim you. May the peace of Jesus bless you. And may the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you today and every day. Be at peace. Amen. <laughs>